Welcome to Session 2, Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Covering Edition. As a reminder, what is here in parentheses in the title references the Elementary Algebra textbook by Harold Jacobs, and in this case it's Chapter 1, Lesson 1. If you're not using that particular textbook along with these teaching videos, then you can just simply ignore what's inside the parentheses here on each of the titles. Lastly, the topic here, addition, is what's most important as far as the content of this lesson, especially when comparing it against other textbooks. Now, before we go ahead and, and go over addition, which most of you are already very, very familiar with, I want to introduce, once again, just the concept of counting. Because counting is actually what you learn how to do before you begin adding. Counting is very simple. Probably the first thing you learned how to count to was 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you counted by ones. You can also count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Or by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. And you became very familiar with counting early on. Then when you were introduced to the concept of addition within math, you oftentimes started off with a very simple illustration. A lot of times uh, you're given objects. I chose to go in this lesson to go ahead and use apples. And a lot of times it's illustrated like this. Here's your addition problem. You start off with three apples over here, and then somebody comes along and gives you four more apples. Qu question being, how many apples do you have all together? Well, for somebody who hasn't memorized what three plus four is, most often what they do is they'll come over here at the left and start counting the apples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We started with three, we added four more to it, and all together now there's seven. So they learn to solve that addition problem by counting. But as you move on, you start memorizing what three plus four is, and you can actually add that in your head without doing any counting. But counting is a valid strategy for trying to determine the answer to addition problems. However, as you get uh, more advanced, counting becomes oftentimes very impractical when you're trying to solve addition problems, especially when you start getting into bigger numbers. Like what is 1,094,617 plus 193,468? Well, to figure out that, if you wanted to start at 1 and start counting your way up, you're going to be there for a long, long time. So you had to learn how to start adding those uh, numbers together. And then broke them down that way. Well, backing up, once again, to our early example of counting, if I counted 7 here, if I were to say, let's treat this as an addition problem, and let's write out the very simple addition problem that's represented by this illustration. Well, we started off with three apples. So I'm going to come over here and just write the number 3. And then I'm going to have a plus sign to indicate that we're adding. And what are we adding to those three apples? Well, we're adding four more apples. So our addition problem, or our addition phrase here, to illustrate this problem with apples is simply 3 plus 4. This 3 indicating the three apples that we started with, and this 4 here representing the four apples that we added to it. Well, another way of thinking about addition is to use a number line. So I just drew a very simple number line down here, and we're starting at the left. And we can see here that the distance from this beginning point over to this second hash here is 2 inches. And that's because each one of these vertical hashes here represents 1 inch. So the distance from here to here, which is represented by this blue bracket up here, is 2 inches. Well, at this same point here, we are now going to add seven more inches to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once again, we could treat this number line and say, well, what is the total length here? We could just simply start at the beginning and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The total length is nine inches. However, we want to solve this problem not by counting. We want to solve it by adding. Not adding with counting, but just simply adding. And this should be something that's memorized in our head because we have small enough numbers here. Well, if we were to take a look at this and rewrite this as a math phrase, we're going to start off with our beginning value, our beginning number. Well, what is our beginning number? It's the 2 inches. So we come over here and we write the number 2. And then we write a plus sign to indicate that we're going to add something to that 2 inches. And what we're adding to it 
is 7 inches. So our math phrase here is 2 plus 7, representing the 2 inches plus the 7 inches. And of course, we know that the answer to that then would be 9. Let's do just a couple quick ones here uh, in our head. I'll write them down here for us, and then we'll move on. Here's the problem. Write down the mathematical phrase for you start off with 11 oranges, and somebody gives you 3. Well, you start off with 11, and then you add 3 to it. So your mathematical phrase there would be 11 plus 3. Now let's say we give you 17, and what you're going to add to that is 11. Well, you start off with 17, and now we're going to add 11 to it. So that's how you would then write the mathematical phrase for 17 plus 11. Let's go over here to our next screen. What we're going to start dealing with here now are situations where we don't know all of the numbers to start with, but we still need to be able to write a mathematical phrase for it. Well, let's go ahead and start here at the bottom right. Here you have a number line. We know that our first distance here is 7. We know that our next distance here is some unknown number. We don't know what that number is, so we assigned the letter X to it. As a reminder, in algebra, we use symbols to represent unknown numbers, and the symbols that are used by convention are letters of the alphabet. So we've chosen to, choose, to use the letter X here. It could have been any letter, A, B, C, G, H, Z, whatever. X just happens to be the letter of our alphabet that's used the most often. So what we have here is we have a number line. We know that this length here is 7. We know that this length here is some unknown number, which has a value of x assigned to it. And then our last here is 12. Going off the same example or the same situations that we had on the previous screen, how would we write the mathematical phrase for this addition problem? Well, we're starting off with the number 7. And what we're adding to it is our length of x, which is the second one in our number line there. Then what we're going to add to that is our third one, 12. So the mathematical phrase represented by this number line is 7 plus x plus 12. It's that simple. We don't have to know what x is here yet. All we are told is it's just some unknown value, and we can attach a symbol to it, a variable. And that variable is the name of the symbol that we assign to it. The letters of our alphabet are the variables that we assign. Let's go up here to this five-sided shape called a pentagon and take a look at it. The length of the five sides are all listed there for us. So if the question asked you, represent or what the illustration shows us as the length of the five sides of that pentagon. Well, all we need to do is just simply choose a side to start with. Well, let's choose this side to start with here, our three side. We're going to come over here and write the number 3, and what we're going to add to it is the length of our second side. Well, the length of our second side is y. Remember, it's an unknown value, so they assigned the letter y to it. Well, our third side is also a 3, so we're going to add 3 to it. Our fourth side here is represented by the length 4, so we're going to add that in as well. And then our fifth and last side here is represented by the letter X. That's another variable. So we have five sides, one, two, three, four, five. But in this five-sided figure, we have two different sides that we don't know the lengths to. One side has been given a length of X, and the other side has been given the length of Y. So once again, the phrase that represents this addition problem over here would be 3 plus Y plus 3 plus 4 plus X. And as a reminder, in math, if you have an addition problem, it does not matter which order that you add the numbers in. You're always going to get the same number. So we could have started with this side and said our addition problem is going to be 3 plus 4 plus x plus 3 plus y. And that will give us the same thing as 3 plus y plus 3 plus 4 plus x. It doesn't matter which order that we add them together in. Let's take one more look here at the bottom right before we go to our review points for this lesson. And that is, what if I said that x in this particular case was 15? Well, if x is 15, what would the total length be then of this line segment? Well, in order to figure it out, we would stick the 15 up here into our 
our mathematical phrase here. 7 plus x, well x is 15. 7 plus 15 is 22. 22 plus 12 is 34. So when x is 15, the length of this line segment is 34. Well, let's say I said that the length of this x is really 1. Well, we would then insert a 1 for our x up here, and we can find out that the length would be 7 plus 1, that's 8. 8 plus 12 would be 20. What if I chose x to be 5? Hypothetically, what if x were a 5? Well, if it was, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. So that we can see the x can vary depending upon which numbers we are told to put in or which numbers that we selected for ourselves. Because of that, that's why these letters, these symbols, are called variables. Variables are letters in algebra that represent an unknown number and are most often represented with different letters of our alphabet, with X and Y being those that are probably used the most often. And then lastly, as a reminder, the sum, most of you are already familiar with that term, but the, the sum is the answer to an addition problem. So whenever you're adding two or more numbers together, the answer to that addition problem is called the sum. Okay then, that'll wrap up this session on addition.